Okay, let's get started. Again, today we'll do our Hello app, or Person app, whatever you want to call it. The book calls it Hello app. I call it Person app. To start with it, we're going to start with a new Xcode project. So again, I launched Xcode already. I have created a new Xcode project. I'm going to use a single view app right here. I'm going to call it Hello app. Yeah, I'm starting brand new. I'm not using the one from last time. Yeah, because we're going to do some different stuff. Yeah, so I'm starting all new from, I'm not going to start from where I left off of last class because I, this, this is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to start new. So again, I'm starting a new one. I called it Hello App. Uh, that's why I gave it a different name. <laughs> I put it on the desktop. Uh, there's my Hello App. So again, I'm just using a new folder. I have my images already. I'm going to hit Create. And... Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do the uh, web part. Um, I do have examples of the web part from previous classes. I think the problem that I have is they've, they've been changing the way the web is, and I have to find some new examples of how to do that. So let's not worry about connecting to the Internet yet. We will make a web page, plus we'll do a, 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 um, a map one as well. So we will get some data from the Internet, but for, for today, I'm just going to start... Um, Again, down here, the only thing I'm changing in the deployment under device is I'm going to use iPhone. So in this window, when you first comes up, it pops up. The only thing I'm going to say is device is iPhone. That's the only thing I'm changing there because I'm making it only for the iPhone. And then the second thing I'm going to click on will be the main storyboard. So there won't be a lot of programming involved in this, uh, except for mostly just dragging and dropping and positioning. So again, the first thing I clicked on was the main storyboard here. First thing you want to do is if you want to change the background color just like we did last class, the key here is to click on the window itself right here on the view. view. And think this window, I, we're going to be talking a lot about this window today. If you don't see this window, now by default it popped up, but sometimes it, it goes away and you're like, oh, it went away. This is kind of like, um, like I said, a window that helps you control all the different pieces. Every piece you put on your app will show up in this window right here. If this window ever goes away, it's down here at the very bottom. If you look down here, and let, let me get rid of my dock here. I think we got some, nobody, hold on, let me get rid of the dock. There we go, okay. Where was I at? Um, down here. So down here at the very bottom where my cursor is, you see this right here, boom, 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 boom. So again, this is kind of like a uh, layers window in Illustrator, layers window in Photoshop. All the pieces you put here will show up here. Just like in Photoshop, you, you put an object in Photoshop, it shows up in the layer. You put an object in Illustrator, it has a layer. It's the same thing. Now, it's going to be multiple view controllers. We have three of them there. Each view controller will have its own kind of box. Do you see that? It will be like a group, so we'll have three of those. See where it says view controller? We'll actually have three of them. Okay? We only have one now because we only started with one. Let's put our text out on the screen first again. will be, oh, we're going to change the background color. Right? I forgot about that. So uh, to change the background color, if you click on the view right here, you go to this option right here. It's the attributes. It's the one that pops down. It's up here in the upper right corner. If you click on that, you'll notice you have there, you have a, a, a background right here, background. And if you remember how I changed the color, is I clicked on a custom, I clicked on custom, it pops up the color wheel. Again, you have a standard color wheel. And since Nathan Explosion is kind of a, a rough guy, we'll make him kind of, we'll make it kind of orangish. Orangish, he's a tough guy. We'll make it kind of orangish. Okay, if you don't see the color box again, Click on the window in this attribute right here. Go down where it says background color. In the background color, you hit custom. Custom should pop up the color wheel. You can keep the color wheel up if you want just by putting it over there. It'll pop up whenever you want colors. Next, I'm going to put my title on there, which would be a label. If you remember how to get to labels over here in the very upper right corner, you have your option for your library. If I click on the library, I can put in... Um, Library, or what am I putting in? Label, L-A-B-E-L, label. 
and I'm going to drag my label out onto the screen. I'm going to kind of put it towards the top up there. And if you look, once you put your label on, you can double click on it and change it. I'm going to put my artist name in there. I'm going to center a little bit. Once you have it, you'll notice you have some options over here. You have plain attributed. Um, in the attributed, you can change the actual size. You can change how many lines you want um, right here. Uh, difference between that is if you want to program the text that needs to be kind of attributed. If you're not going to program it, I think you just leave it at plain. So right now we're not going to change it, but I'm just pointing out, I believe the difference between these is one that you can program and one you can't. In addition, you have color right here, and if you want to change the color, you can go down to custom color if you want, or the, the default color might show up. We're going to do red. And then you have font right here, and uh, um, how to... I forget how to load the font in. I was doing that before. Oh, here's a plus. No. Oh, we need to change the font. And then also there's automatically adjust font right here when you're using the system font. But there was a way to. I know she. Now is demonstrating how to change the font in previous. I can't remember how. Where where's that? Oh, there we go. Thank you. So click the T. And where? Oh, there we go. But again, the problem that you run into with this is that. You know, using a custom font might not show up on every device. Like if I use marker felt. I don't know. That's a good question. When you package your app, it will actually include the font. So when you package it, it'll actually take the font and then package that into your app. Again, it was under T, right? Thank you. It was under T, yeah. And you can choose a font under family. So again, center it. You notice how you center it with the dotted line. Did you see that? Center it. Okay, you ready to put in the picture? Or should we align this first? You want to align it first, just like we did last class? Okay, let's practice our alignment then. The first thing we're going to do is go to the one that looks like a bar chart here towards the bottom. Do you see it? It says align down there. It's all the way down towards the bottom. It looks like a bar chart down there. If you click on that, we can say align horizontal and hit add one constraint. Boom. Again, now you see the red lines around the outside. The reason why you have red around the outside of the text is it doesn't know where it is positioned. It knows it's in the center, but it doesn't know how far down or from the edges it is. So at this point, we're just going to go down just like we did last class. And remember, we just measured down from the top. To measure down from the top, we're going to use the next one, the one that kind of has a square with two, two, two edges. It's right next to Add New Constraint. Do you see that? Click on that. And the, the number here represents how far down it is from the top. You could just click the little bar that's between the top here and this object right here. If you click on there, right there, you just hit Add One Constraint, and boom, it is down from the top. Okay? Let's put in our picture, and we'll put it below that, and then we will align that as well. So again, I'm going to go to the picture here, the library, and we're going to put in, if you remember from last class, how to put the picture in, it's going to call image view. Image view. Once you have the image view up, I'm going to click on it right here, and I'm going to drag it out, center it, and you can change the size if you would want a little bit. Might make it a little square. Once you're done putting the image view in, you need to get your images and put them into the app. To get the images and get the images into the app, we're going to use the assets window. And if you remember before, um, it's easiest just to drag them. So I'm going to kind of make the window a little bit smaller here. I'm going to move some stuff around here. I'm going to get my images and put them over here. Here we go. So um, what I'm going to do is, if you'll notice, and I'm going to cut close colors, so I don't need that right now. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, assets window right here, the one that says assets. It's right here. Don't. And the other thing is don't ever delete the app icon. If you delete this, your app will crash. So don't delete, delete that. Again, instead of selecting the storyboard, I'm going to select the assets window. See it right here? Assets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to grab my images that I have and I'm going to drag them into this window. I'm going to drag them into this window just by clicking on them and dragging them in. When you drag an image in, remember there's three of them here that says 1x, 2x, 3x. In this case, we're not changing them. We'll learn how to do all three of those when we get to making the uh, making an app that has a bar at the bottom, right? When you make you know, a lot of the apps you have, you know, have little icons that go along the bottom here. We'll make our own icons down there and. Uh, We'll then make three different sizes so that it's appropriate for all devices. In theory, you should do this to make sure that it's optimized for every device. That's sort of in theory if you can get how you do that. Photoshop does it automatically for you. Illustrator does. There's an export window, and it'll actually resize them appropriate for you and name them appropriate for you. We'll do that in a later class. But again, I just dragged the images in. Once the images are in, I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to the main storyboard. Okay, and then to put one of the pictures in your view, to put one of the pictures in your view, you have your image view selected. I'm going to go over here to the attributes window. Oh, click your image, click your image here. Go to the attributes window. It's the one that points down, show attributes inspector. And where it says image right there, you'll notice there is a pull down menu right there, a little blue that points down. If you click on that, you'll see that you have your images will pop up and you can choose which one you want from your list there. And then I like that one. Then if you remember how to change the image once it's inside the box you have this content mode right here content mode and you got scale aspect fill and fill aspect redraw center and so on so there's different ways of viewing it inside there it's just how it's going to scale the picture into the box and if you remember if you wanted to cut off the edges remember last class I had a, a bigger one than the window it's down here where it says clip to bounds clip to bounds if you remember that from last class when I cut off the edges I use click click clip to bounds do you remember that right down here I'm not going to do that because mine doesn't need clip to bounds right now but if you have one that's bigger and the edges are out going outside your viewable area clip to bounds will cut off the edges next to that we need to actually um, take the image and make it the right size, give it some dimension, and tell it to be down from the text, if you remember that. So again, I'm going to make sure my picture is selected, and I'm going to come down here to the uh, center, and I'm going to do align center, just like the other one. Makes it in the center, align center. And then for the uh, constraints, which is the next one, I'm going to go down from the top, so this will go down from the text. And then you need to also give it a width and height in this case. And it wants to know what the dimensions are so that it knows in space how big that box needs to be. So if you're doing an image, you need to do width and height. And when you're done, you hit add three constraints, and it'll be happy. If you see blue lines that go around the outside, it's happy. Here's a common problem that you might run into, is if you go over here and you simply, simply drag extra, if you grab your picture, oops, and drag it like this, you'll notice you get these yellow lines. When you see the yellow lines like that, it's telling you, hey, you gave it positioning, but now it's not in the right position. That's what the yellow lines are telling you. So if you see these yellow lines, it means that you've already told it to be somewhere, but then you moved it to a new lo location. It's not red, it's not you know, gonna blow up your app, it's just when you simulate it, it's actually going to put it back in that spot. It will automatically put it there. Because you told it to be in that spot. If you did move that and you want to go back, you can actually click on the yellow bar and go back. 
Okay, let's go back in time here. So again, if you move it like that, it'll do that. So um, what it's showing you is that the position is off. Um, and let me uh, think. I, there was a way to quickly bring it back. Um, and I don't know. I don't remember. I'll have to try and remember how to quickly. If, I'm just going to say undo. Put it back for now. Okay. But there is a quick way to get it back to, into the right position. I can't remember at this point. Okay, let's put our buttons on there. So we're going to have two more buttons. One that's going to say learn more about Nathan and the other one will be pictures of Nathan. So to put buttons on, remember you go over here and we're going to put in button B-U-T-T-O-N and then drag one out and let's say learn more about Nathan. And then let's drag another one out. I'm going to make another button. And we'll say uh, um, picture gallery like that. Okay, so I have two of them right here. Two buttons on top of each other. So put two buttons out there. Don't worry about the position at this point. We're going to do it together. We're going to actually make it into a stack. So since we have two buttons on top of each other here, it would make sense that we would combine these together in a group. Remember stack, use the word group for stack. We're going to take both of these, put them together in one group. And then we're going to take that group and then center it and then, put, and then give it the position. If we didn't put it in a group, you would have to position this one and position this one separately. But by grouping it together, we can position the group. Okay, so do you guys have two buttons? Let's select both of them. So select both. You can use a shift key to select both of them. So use the shift key to click both of them. Have both of them selected. And to make them in a group, it's it's all the way here at the bottom. Let me make my window a little bigger. It's the one that has the arrow that's pointing down. Do you see the one that has the arrow that points down? The, like down here where we were doing the alignment stuff. Do you see that down there? Oh, shift. So if you click on one, hold the shift key down, click on the other one. No. Shift. Two of them selected. It's okay. So we have two of them selected. See the arrow that points down right there? Click on that. It's going to ask you what you want to do. And again, we want to do what? Stack view. We're not doing a scroll view yet. We're doing stack view. Do you see that? When you click on it, it'll combine them together into a group. And then we can kind of align them so that they're in the center. So you'll notice it has a purple box. Do you see stack view? It should have a purple box. And they're kind of together. Now we'll do the same thing we did with the other ones, where we center it and then put it down. So let's center it. Center again is this one right here. It looks like the uh, bar chart. Center. And then, of course, it's, it has red. It doesn't know where it's at. So we need to tell it to go down from the picture, which is the one next to it. And we're going to click on the top right there. See the top right there? Boom. OK, so this is all done. We have our buttons, and we have our stuff. Everybody cool with that? Do we do the width and height or no? No, no width and height. You just position. You don't have to give it width and height. So the picture in red switch is No, red is on there. Okay. Did you do that already? Okay, let's make our second view. We're going to go and uh, let's do this one. Which one are you going to do? The gallery or this? Let's do this one. It's probably easier. Okay, it's just text. But we have to have a back button as well. Okay, so we're going to make a new view. So we're going to make a new view. To make a new view controller, we have to go and to the, the thing at the top, the label, and make new view controller. 
I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Remember, there's these plus and minuses here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to scroll over. And so I'm going to make a new one by clicking up here at the very top where it says library, and we're going to type in view, and we're going to put in a new view controller and drag it out. Remember, you can give it a background color if you want, or it can be a different color. It might be nice that you know the, pe the it's a different color so that people know that the, they're in the uh, the text or whatever you might want to call it. So I'm going to click on this and uh, maybe give it a different color. Remember background. So again, click in this window right here, and you can give it a different color. Maybe I give it um, a nice light blue. Nice light blue here. In addition, we want to copy his name over, so we, we, we reinforce his name. If you remember, did everybody get a view, though? I don't want to continue unless you got a view. I have the view, but they're not, they're not next to each you can, other. You can move them around by clicking the little blue bar at the top. Do you see that? You can move them around. You can zoom out down here as well. Zoom in. Yep. Everybody got that? Okay, to duplicate the text, if you remember, I'm going to click on his name right here. I'm going to hold that Option key on the keyboard with my other hand, and I'm going to click and drag over here. So, again, click on the title, his name, hold that Option key on the keyboard, Option, and click and drag to the next window. It'll duplicate. Option is the duplicate key. Let's position it. You're going to have to position it. The reason why I looked over here. You have a new view controller here. See it? So this one is representative of this one. This one's representative of this one. Okay? So you have a new view controller. And I'm going to kind of, you know, clear these up. But And so this one needs some position. You can center it. It can align center, just like we did before, horizontal center. And then down from the top just like we did before. Next, let's put a back button in there. Or no, we got a home button. You want to go back home, home, home? So let's make a button that's underneath his name here that says home that takes you back to this screen. To make a button here to, to go back to this screen, I'm going to click on the box right here and I'm going to type in button button, my bottom button, and I'm going to put it in there, and then let's uh, uh, call it uh, home. How about that? I like the word home instead. And maybe make it a little bit bigger if you want, so you can see it, home. And so that'll take us back to here. Again, you need to position that, so the position again, once I put my button in there, I can say center, and then uh, down from the top and that'll be done. Don't worry about programming the button yet. We'll just put it in there. So again, put a button in there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it. I got a button in there. Uh, I just put it here, home. And then I put it down from the top. So again, put the text in there, put a button in there, and then put it position. Okay, I'll pause for a minute. So again, uh, let me zoom out briefly so you can see. What I want to do is I'm going to kind of double the size of this window here because right now it's, it ends here like this one. I'm actually, it's not going to double the size on the phone. It's going to be the same size on the phone. It's just we, you need to be able to see the content that you're putting in even though the window is bigger. So here's how you do it. You click in the bar at the top, this one right here. Make it blue. See the bar at the very top up here? You make it blue. Once it's blue up there, we're going to come over here to this option right here. It looks like a, a ruler. Do you see where it says show the size inspector? It's the one that looks like a ruler all the way in the upper right corner. Inside there, it says simulated size. Simula it says fixed because that's the fixed size of the, um, the, fixed size of the, the, the Apple or the phone. Change that fixed size to freeform. And in the free form, you can actually go and double. You can put in, I'm going to kind of double this. Let's go to like 2,500. Something like that. 12,550. How about 1,250? Then hit tab on the keyboard. 
it might it'll make your window bigger like that and then you can build I'll do it again here's how I do it let me let me do it again again click on the blue bar at the top up here the blue part this blue blue bar right here at the top this bar at the top make it blue go to the ruler it looks like a ruler up here see it looks like a ruler show inspector it looks like a ruler click on that where it says simulate size say free form free form and change the height to something longer and then we can build it's a it's a box like you would an image box or something like that to get to it you go up here to the um up here to the the insert and you type in scroll c r or s c r o oh, spell it right s c r o l and it's called a scroll view do you see it it's like an option drag that out kind of make it the size you think you're going to need and drag it all the way down all the way down below kind of towards the bottom and we're going to fill this whole thing up with text we're going to fill that whole thing up with text okay how do we fill this whole thing up with text well we're going to uh, <coughs> click inside and we're going to pu actually put text in by using the text uh, let me think let me think for a minute uh, let me think uh, scroll view provided is larger than the size of the application window yes and I want to put text in there and we're going to put a label. Actually, we can put a text field as an action text view. Display multiple lines of editable text and sends an action message to a direct target object when we turn this tab. No, I don't really want that. No, I actually want to use a label. And I'm going to drag the label inside there. And I'm going to make it big. Hold on, let me think about how to do this first. Make the label big. And then I want to make sure it's multiple lines. Um, label. Multiple lines. Hold on, let me just try this real quick. And then uh, let me steal my text from Wikipedia. Um, P-E-D-I-A, Wikipedia, and let's put in Nathan Explosion. There's uh, Nathan Explosion. Uh, where's Nathan? Nathan. Nathan. There he is. Here's his text. I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to copy that. Hold on. I will do this together once I figure it out, I'm, I'm what I want to do. And then I'm going to scroll view, yes. And I want to put my text in there. But it's not wrapping. Yeah. How do I wrap that text? Here's my plain text. My box is not the right size. Oh, I need to, 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 to make my box smaller. No, I lost it completely. Okay, let me do this again. I should have given I should have given it a size. Let me pause this. Okay, let's try doing the scroll view one more time. Last time. Last time's a charm. There we go. Okay, the first thing to do is of course to put your um Scroll view on. So let's go scroll. So I'm gonna drag the scroll view on and make it bigger. Next, we're going to align the scroll view to the box or the view, the main view of the window, except for the top because we'll we'll constrain the top of the view to the home button that's there. So to do that you have to use the control key. So again, I'm going to take the scroll view button right here, hold the control key down and click on it and drag to the view. And we want to do 
letting. Then we want, again, hold the control key down, click on view. Trailing, hold the control key down, click on view. Bottom. So you take all three, this side, this side, and the bottom, and constrain it to the view. Then next, I'm going to take the top and constrain it to the home button by using the uh, the auto layout new constraint right here to the top right there so that would then align to the home button so again the scroll view the left is to the edge of the screen the right is to the edge of the screen the bottoms to the edge of the screen but the top is to the home button next we put a label in label and then in that label we're gonna make it a little bit bigger and a little higher and then we constrain the label to the scroll view like we did by using the control key so by clicking on the label I can hold the control key down and click on to the scroll view and say the letting to the container top to the container trailing to the container and bottom to the container so you take the label and make it the same size as the scroll view by again holding the control key and dragging on top of that next I'm going to put the text into the label by going over here and before we do that the lines put to zero so there's no <coughs> strain lines there's no constraints to the lines then take and put your text into the label option up here where the box is hit tab on the keyboard now the problem that you run into though is it thinks it wants text that is really really big so you need to tell the text box to have a width a fixed width if you remember how to tell it to have a fixed width is the box down here where you have your auto remember where we put width down here and you have a width right there, width. And that should be the end. I know it seems like a lot, it's a lot to remember. But we can test it now. And you should be able to scroll the box. Boy, that was painful. Okay, see if you can get that to work. I will uh, put this video 